Welcome back to NRM 638, Python Scripting for ArcGIS Applications, Spring Semester 2015. This is an e-learning class at the University of Alaska Fairbanks. In this session, we're going to work with the Python Random Module. So go to the Blackboard website and download this text file, randommodule.txt, from this week's Blackboard uh, website. And since we're going to be working with the random module, you could either work in ArcMap or you could work in the Python IDL. So I'll work in ArcMap Python window. So we'll first import the Python random module. And there are many functions in the random module. So if you do dir random, you'll get a list of the functions. So for example, random.choice random.random, .random, rand range, rand int, etc. And we'll go through the common functions that are in this module. So one common function is random.random. .random. So if you go help random.random, .random, it returns a value that's a floating point value between 0 and 1. So we'll loop through 10 times and extract random values from 0 to 1. So here's what random.random .random returns. So each time it's a floating point value between 0 and 1. The random.uniform function allows you to specify a lower limit and an upper limit. So here return values between 2000 and up to, but not including 2015. So we have values between 2000 and up to, but not including 2015 and they're return as floating point values when we use the random.uniform. Okay, we can use the random.randint, and that will return integer or whole numbers. So here it'll be between zero and up to, but not including 100. So then we get whole numbers returned by that function. Then we can use the random.ran range to specify a lower limit, an upper limit, and then the interval or step. So here return between 1900 and 2010 in increments of 10. So then we have from 1900 to 2010 in increments of 10. And press the up arrow key to recall and we'll get different random decades. And you notice that this function returns the same value, so it's basically sampling with replacement. So it is possible to sample the same decade more than once. Okay, so random.uniform also samples with replacement. So here we're going to make a list. The list is ran sample, and we're going to have 10 items in that list, and it'll be an integer between 2000 and 2015. So let's look what happened when we did that. It's in our list. So you notice we have 2007 and 2007. So that's what's called sampling with replacement. And we'll sort this list to make it clearer. So ran sample dot sort, and then what's in our list. So here, 2005 occurred twice. 2007 occurred twice, 2009 occurred twice. So random.uniform returns sampling with replacement. Okay, so random.sample does not replace. So if it's selected, it cannot be selected a second time. So now what is in our list called ran sample? So you notice that there's no year that occurs more than once. Okay, so random.shuffle randomly shuffles items in a container like a list. So we can execute this code. And what is in my cards? So it just randomly shuffle these items in the list. And we could execute it a second time. And then what is in my cards? So then it randomly shuffles what's in the list. You can use the random.choice command to select one item randomly from a container. So what is my card? It's been randomly chosen. So it's diamond. 
then we could execute randomly choose another card from this list of four cards and then press the up arrow key what is my card now so it is a heart so we could randomly choose yes no or maybe so the first time through it's no next time through it's no next time through it's yes the next time through it's yes and also use the random module to create distributions. So random.gauss creates a Gaussian or bell-shaped distribution. So basically that's a distribution that peaks at the mean and you give inputs of the mean value and the standard deviation. So we'll make an empty list called test list and then we'll loop from zero up to 10,000 and append items to that list and it will be a Gaussian distribution or a normal shape bell shaped curve where the mean should be 100 and the standard deviation should be 25. So now what's in our list, if we say what's the length of our list, uh, 10,000 items in that list. So what's the mean of those 10,000 values in our list? Well, we could use the sum function. So take those 10,000 values, sum them, and then divide by 10,000. So the mean is very close to what we requested, which was 100. So the mean is 99.69. And to determine the standard deviation, we'll have to import NumPy to get the standard deviation function. So we import the NumPy module, and then NumPy.std will return the standard deviation for any list. It is very close to 25, it's 25.2. Okay, we can also randomly select characters. So we can import the string module and string.ascii letters will return these characters. And string.digits will return the numeric characters. So what we could do is use the random.choice and randomly choose from these characters or randomly choose from these digits. So we'll set our password equal to just a null string to start. And then for I going from zero up to 16, randomly choose a letter or a number and then print that random character. And then our password is gonna be equal to current password plus that random character. So then basically the first time through it will be an uppercase V the next time through will be a lowercase v. Here it became a four, etc. So then what is in that password? So that's 16 character random password that's generated by this loop and the random.choice function. Okay, so if you go to the Blackboard website, I've got a quiz question for you, and that will lead you to the next video session, which will be on generating random points in ArcGIS.